Hey everybody, I'm Peter Felice. I'm a plastic surgeon at Advanced Cosmetic Surgery in Greenville, South Carolina. And this video is just a little bit about how I got to where I am right now, AKA as a plastic surgeon. So a lot of patients and a lot of friends or family members have absolutely no idea what it takes to go to med school, to go to college, to go through residency, because it's such a strange and ridiculous and kind of random path to get to where I am now professionally. So this is just a little bit of an insight, a little bit of education on how I got to where I am. So uh, to be any type of physician, first you have your four years of college, and then after college or during college, you'll take the MCAT, which is basically one of the uh, admissions tests for getting into med school. Hopefully you do really great on the MCAT and you can apply to as many and get accepted as at many med schools as you want to and start your med school training. So med school is basically broken down. First couple of years will be you're in the classroom learning about physiology, learning about anatomy, how the body works. And then the latter half or the last two years of the four years total of med school is actually doing clinical rotations. So for me, I did general surgery, I did pediatrics, I did ob I did psychology and psychiatry. So you spend a little bit of time in each of these individual clinical scenarios to try to figure out, okay, what do you wanna do when you grow up? So for me, I knew I was interested in general surgery. So after my four years of college and four years of med school, I applied and got into a general surgery program at the University of South Carolina in Columbia. And so that's a five year program basically to show you a little bit of everything for how to operate head to toe in the body. No orthopedics, no neurosurgery, no ob but basically everything else that you can operate on, that's what we did. So here's a broad overview of how to get yourself to and through medical school to become a physician, whichever physician that you might wanna be. So basically four years of college, followed by four years of medical school. And after medical school, you apply for a residency position, which is basically like, what type of medicine do I wanna practice? And it's gonna focus on elements of that. So depending on the residency or the specialty that you choose, it can be either a three-year long training program or a five or six-year long training program. For plastic surgery, they really do one of two ways. You can do an independent program where you study a different residency specialty independent of plastics and then go into plastic surgery after that. Or you do an integrated program where there are two programs basically combined together, usually a surgical specialty, then it hops you right into a plastic surgery training program. So the independent program is anywhere from seven to eight years long. The integrated program is usually about six years. So counting up the years again, I've got four years of college, four years of med school, and a residency that's anywhere between three to 10 years, and I actually did 10 years of residency, so that's 18 years right there before I get to start practicing as a plastic surgeon. But wait, there's more. You need to make sure that you pass a series of exams. One is a written board examination followed by an oral board examination, and after passing those two, which thank you I did, you're then board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery, and you're an officially full-fledged plastic surgeon. So that's kind of the main path to take to get to where I am. So I did a little bit individually. I did it a little bit differently. I did general surgery residency for five years, and then I did three years of plastic surgery after that. So a total of eight years, but I also spent two years doing a craniofacial research fellowship just to get a little extra training, a little bit of experience. I liked being in the lab. It's something that I wanted to do during my research and training years of residency. So 10 years of residency for me, but I finally made it and here we are today. So for anybody that's interested in pursuing a career in medicine, there's more than one way to do it. In fact, there's probably as many paths to take as there are people looking to become physicians in the future. Bottom line is when you're in college, you'd have to take the MCAT, you have to take some pre-medical courses to prepare you for that. 
but you can go to whatever school you want to go to, major and minor and whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be all biology. It doesn't have to be all sciences, um, but put yourself in a good position where you feel comfortable studying for the MCAT so you can get accepted at a med school, learn all sorts of wonderful things. Even if you don't plan on pursuing a career in one field or another, it really is a wonderful opportunity to learn and do and see a lot of great things with a lot of great people and patients, um, even if it's not something that you're gonna do for your final job description, as it were. Um, and lastly, for plastics, really the two most popular ways of getting into a plastics residency is the integrated route. So it's basically two surgical residencies squished together, usually a surgical specialty followed by plastic surgery. Or you can do it the way that I did it, an independent route where you complete a full surgical subspecialty before going into plastic surgery. So in addition to college, medical school, residency, specialty fellowships, you can even get more so specialized within plastic surgery because there's lots of areas of very specific anatomy that plastic surgeons work with. For instance, you can become a hand surgeon and do additional training and additional uh, residency to focus on the intricacies of hand care and hand surgery. There's also craniofacial surgery. There's our very specialized surgeons that do a lot of great work, uh, oftentimes with pediatric populations for cleft lips, cleft palates, um, different types of craniofacial anomalies of the skin and soft tissue and skeleton. And there's also an aesthetic or cosmetic fellowship. So for residents that know that they'd like to have a little extra training or a little bit more focus on the art and application of aesthetic plastic surgery, that's a great opportunity for an additional training with that type of fellowship. So there's a lot of different ways to get to where you're going. There's no such thing as one size fits all. Do something that you love, love what you do. Not every day is gonna be the happiest day of your life, but that's okay, it's part of the process. It's worth it in the end. And uh, I'd love to hear any questions or comments that you might have about plastic surgery, general surgery, medical education in general, and uh, give us a like, subscribe to see more videos like this, and thanks so much for watching.